Imagine that you're stranded on a raft in the middle of the ocean. You don't have any emergency food or water, but you also know that humans can only survive about three days without fluids. Should you drink seawater or not? Stick with us, we're going to find out and also review hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions along the way. Cells have a very finite range of conditions in which they can survive. If it's too hot, too cold, too watery, too salty, too acidic, or too basic, they can't function properly. We're going to explore what happens when you place a cell in a solution that is much more salty, hypertonic, much more watery, hypotonic, or has an equal salt concentration, isotonic. Remember that cell membranes are selectively permeable. They allow certain particles to pass through, but not others. Usually, larger molecules can't fit through the membrane without special channels. The cell membrane is fitted with special protein channels called aquaporins, which allow water molecules to pass through without expending energy. However, the ease with which the water molecules can cross is going to depend on something called the concentration. Concentration is a measure of how much solute there is per volume of solvent. In other words, whether the liquid is more salty or more watery. We'd usually expect that the molecules would follow a process called diffusion. They would flow from areas of higher to lower concentration. Eventually, they will reach equilibrium, where there will be an equal concentration on both sides of the membrane. However, in the case of a liquid like salt water, the salt molecules are much, much too big to fit through the membrane, so the only particle that can move is water. Let's look a little more closely. Water molecules are highly attracted to salt molecules. They cluster around salt and really, really don't want to move. The positive parts of the water molecule stick to the negative parts of the sodium chloride and vice versa. The interactions between oxygen and sodium and between hydrogen and chlorine are called ion-dipole interactions, which you might remember from chemistry. Water molecules that are not stuck to a molecule of salt are far more likely to relocate. Today, we're going to immerse a cell in three kinds of liquids, a very solute-rich liquid, a very watery liquid, and a liquid that's in between. Then we'll see what happens to the water molecules. In this first scenario, the liquid surrounding the cell has many molecules of solute in it. This liquid is hypertonic compared to the cell. It has a much higher concentration of solute particles and a much lower concentration of water. Unfortunately, the solute molecules can't pass through the membrane to reach equilibrium, but water molecules can. The molecules of water on the outside of the cell are going to be obstructed from passing through by the many molecules of solvent. However, the molecules on the inside have much less solvent getting in the way. Water will begin rushing out of the cell. Some water will come in, but the net movement, the overall movement, of the water molecules will be outwards and the cell will shrink. We call this cell contraction plasmolysis. This is also how pickles are made. Now let's immerse a cell in a much less concentrated solution, a hypotonic solution. Compared to the cell, it's much less salty. Some water molecules will exit the cell, but even more will rush in because they aren't obstructed by solute particles. The cell grows in size and it may even undergo cytolysis and burst. Placing a cell in an isotonic solution, where the concentrations inside and outside are equal, is much more pleasant. Equal amounts of water molecules continue to pass in and out of the cell. The system is in dynamic equilibrium. Particles are continuing to move, but the net movement is zero. The cell neither grows nor shrinks and is much more likely to survive. Now let's return to our seawater question. Seawater is incredibly salty, much more salty than our body's cells. Since it's such a hypertonic solution, if you immersed your cells in it, they would shrivel up and die. The real danger, however, lies in how your kidneys would react to the seawater. Your kidneys would attempt to remove the toxic levels of salt by using water pulled from your cells. Your body would actually use more water in removing the salt than was originally contained in the seawater itself. In summary, drinking seawater is a lousy idea even in extreme circumstances you're better off drinking your own pee. So there we have it, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions, as well as a couple of practical examples. If you found this video useful, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and checking out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching, take care.